Welcome to Wood Turning with Dave. Welcome to Wood Turning with Dave. I want to make a couple of eyes. Now, sounds daft, but the eye drawer in my head, they're going to be quite pretty. They're going to be wall mounted, and the frame of the eye is going to be purple heart, filled with resin, and a nice purple heart pupil as well. Out of this one plank, I'm going to make two eyes and a fusion bowl. Purple Heart is one of the hardest woods that I've had to work with and it's a bit challenging to sand when you're finishing it because you get generate too much heat and you get these nasty little heat cracks which I'm going to avoid at all costs. Fusion Bowl, you going to incorporate that in the, down the centre along with a piece of Lignum Vitae. The reason for putting those down the middle, I don't need for my eyes that I'm making a full circle. I need two part circles and then another two part circles. I've sort of drawn all this out on bits of paper and what I've worked out is this. Don't worry about this black here. That will, is only on the surface of the wood and it happens during the drying process. That will come off as soon as I start sanding and finishing. So, give you an idea. That will be the eyeball, okay? And then the thickness of the wood about an inch like so, and allowing room for a pupil. I'm gonna have a larger piece of wood, almost a half. Again, about an inch. There, we have one eyeball. That's not a full half. That's not a full half. So I can use the, the piece with the fusion bowl, cut off the outside inch, and use that for the frame for the top. The outside inch of the bowl on this end, I will use for the bottom. And then fill this with resin and a metal leaf something like copper and gold. This would be purple heart as well, the, the pupil. This would be like a goldy color, like a lion's eye. That's the intent anyway. Let's see how it goes. Coolest pencil and rubber in the world. That's the rubber. That's the pencil with little umbrella on top. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of funky. All right, that's my cut line for the table saw in a minute. That'll be halfway down the bowl. Implant that and that. Glue that in, that'll make my fusion bowl. I'll trim these up a bit, obviously, as well. You'll see all that in a moment on the table saw. My little pencil back in its rubber. And then over here, now I know where the edge of my bowl is, which is right there. I want to avoid the cracks on this end of the wood, the bit that goes around the bottom of the eyeball, reasonably close. One piece of purple heart, one piece of you. This is kind of a hardwood fusion bowl. Let's get some glue in there, I suppose. Whee! I always tend to use a bit too much wood glue, but I always think it's better to have slightly more than not enough. I try to always remember to get it on both joining surfaces. Just going to flatten the bottom off, put a quick chuck grip in this side, round the outside. The purple heart is absolutely glorious wood. You can't see it brilliantly purple at the moment, but it will purple up with UV light, but not direct sunlight. Direct sunlight for Purple Heart is no good. It'll turn a very dark purple, and then over time a darker mottled brown. Not good. So keep it out of direct sunlight. I right, finished the outside edge and finished waxing it. You can see that lovely finish. I put a coat of super glue over the, the bottom here. Um, that is going to be stuck down to a piece of MDF to create my eyes. You'll see in due course. Uh, look at that shimmer. Purple heart. Looks very pretty. Next job, turn it around.
So this is going to be the bottom part of the eye and looking at the center piece, that's going to be the bulk of the eyeball. I think I can get away with a slightly thinner rim on the outside of the bottom of the eye and the top. I think I'm going to go with an inch. That currently is inch and a quarter. So I think I'm going to go slightly smaller down to about there. The dodgy bit going through. I don't want it knocking on that bottom bar. Drill a hole through the last remaining bit there. Put the jigs and run around and then clean up the edge uh, by hand. Ha, huh, fine. That's what I'm going to do. I just don't like the prospect of that flying off and trying to catch it with a gloved hand like that and the tool being so deep in there and jerking and ruining all that lovely work I've done on the outside edge. So, right, jigsaw. Forgetting the outside inch and a half for the time being, I do want this side to be the bottom of the bowl eventually. So I don't want to put a big drill chuck hole directly in the middle. I don't want four screws from a faceplate in there. So I'm going to glue a block of wood on there, stick the faceplate on there. When it's on the lathe, a chuck grip there. I want this to be the top because it's got the most going on with the U and the Ligna Vitae, whereas the other side is not as interesting, so that can be the bottom of the bowl. The outside inch and a half, as you know, is for the eyes that I'm making, which you'll see not too distant future. So, glue that on there, screw that on there, stick it on the lathe. Gonna rough down the outside, flatten off that, put chuck grip in the middle, only very rough turned. I cut that off because that would be perfect for another turning job at a later stage rather than waste wood. Hey, I've cleaned up this, the first inch that I'm going to use for the eyes. I've flattened off the outside edge. Everything's all now nice and square. Can you see the eyes yet? No, probably not. Might help if I do this. Lots of trimming. That big circle from the outside. <laughs> That's all I needed from it a better gauge. I haven't trimmed these yet. I need to trim a bit off the corners. I use the bits I cut out just to prop up. These will be coming down on here then filling with resin but I need to get the angles right first. The corners that I cut off of the large fusion bowl, the larger pieces of them, I've cut the circle in to use for the pupil. Added a bit of scrap wood for when I do the turning, so as not to put any sort of hole or chuck grip, I can put the hole into that, turn the pupil, which will sit just below the resin. So I'm not even gonna use all of that purple heart. That'll go dead center right up next to the eyelid. And you can see the eyes coming together. In my head at the moment, I've got a quarter of an inch of black resin at the bottom. That will hold the pupil in. Then I've got a clear layer of resin, quite thick, with some gold and copper fleck mixed into the resin, which I found from Tess Settle at the bottom of the resin. And then a final pour of clear resin over the top. They're actually meant to be lion eyes. Purple, yes, gold, purple pupil, not so much. Lions have black. But this will darken up beautifully and it is just an artistic interpretation so you know i've allowed some license <laughs> now all we need to do is get that curve right so it bucks up to this nicely pupil making time pupil a nice round at the end just ducking in towards here i want it about a centimeter less than the surface of the resin
sand it, cover it in super glue. So that's going within the resin. I don't want that leaking air bubbles as it's as the resin cures. Now I'm gonna make another one almost identical. Yay! There you go, not a perfect finish, but good enough. Yeah. Whack a load of super glue on there. It's all going under resin anyway. The super glue has stopped the bubbles coming out of the wood. And there we go. That I'll do as a pupil. Trim that off once that glue's dried. So I'm not too worried about that little vague line you can see there. You're looking at this perspective, not at the side. That's all the pieces of my puzzle put together. Purple heart dust. I'm gonna mix that in with the glue to do the joins here and here. I'm gonna glue underneath both of these. That's dead center. Actually, slightly north of that is dead center. But if you look at pictures of lion eyes online, they are slightly nearer the nose. Next thing will be a thin layer about 10 mil, then clear with copper and gold mica flakes. It's just little bits of metal. And when you mix that into very fluid resin, over time that settles down in the bottom. So that's gonna coat the back of the resin with that lovely flake, which has kind of got orange and gold tones, very much like lion eyes. So that's the second pour. Third pour will be on the very top just to level it out even, and then I've got to sand it and polish it and make it pretty. Just taking the other one off the lathe, finished it on the sander just so it's nice and flat. Gives you a good idea. They won't be that close on the wall when I mount them because at the moment that looks a bit like an owl. They'll be a lot further apart. Still look a bit like owl eyes, but it's open to interpretation. If somebody comes along and goes, oh, lovely owl eyes. Okay, time to get on and do some gluing, I guess. gone for burnt orange because the back of the eye of the lion is a kind of burnt orange color. Not that necessarily you're gonna see any of this layer. While I'm waiting for the resin to dry, I've got a three day with the glass cast, a three day resin set before I pour the next layer. I may as well get this turned. can't help it. I've got to share my favorite bit. I've only finished this 320 grit at the moment, but I'm going to Yorkshire grit it. Just look at the explosion of color there. And wait for it. Shimmer in it is stunning. Look at that. So pretty. Yorkshire grit should get those final sanding lines out. That U is going to color up lovely in time. The ligna is going to go very green banded lines. And look even nicer on the, on the other side of this very shallow bowl that I think I'm going to do a very fat rim on. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? show you again uh, when the eyes are finished. I'll sort of put them all together so you can see the finished result of everything. So remember the colours you can see in that Ligna Vitae now. You wait until the UV light has got on it and it's reacted. Fingers crossed that U doesn't split anymore around these knots. I've super glued them all the tiny little cracks that you get around the knots. go give that wax a chance to dry and take it off the lathe and take it indoors
quite pleased with the way they've turned out. A couple of things I would have done differently if I'm making them again. The fleck in the second pour, I did the main pour on the second pour and put the fleck in it, as you saw from the speeded up video just now. And there are a couple of bits of flake that were nearer the top of the resin as the, as the flake sank. So there are a couple, just a couple, and it's fine. It's characteristic. <laughs> Uh, but if I do it again, or something similar, I will do a thin layer with lots of the fleck in it. I have ripped this away from this. I've got a nice lump of MDF on the back. What I do want to show you, look at that. Now the MDF is on the back still, but once the MDF is off, I wonder how much light's gonna come through that. That might look epically cool. We'll find out in a minute. Let's have a look at the other one. Mm, a bit thick on the leaf there. Well, that's because there's more MDF on the back of that one. <laughs> Idiot. Right, I'm gonna sand the back off before I even, even do anything on the front, just to see what happens with the light coming through. That might determine if I make them wall mounted or some sort of stand. So let's have a little look-see now. Now that I've taken that off, wow. <laughs> you can see where some of the flakes are a lot thicker. For next time, far more even spread of, of the, the flakes. I think mixing up in the resin just prior to pouring, rather than letting it sink in the resin as I'm pouring. But in the interim, wow, <laughs> that's on fire. But given this, I think, yeah, wall mounted. Sanded to 240 grit. This way I know that I've got nice level flat surfaces. My next job is to fit some sort of hanging bracket. One of these on the back. And I've compared these to the image of the lion eyes that I showed you earlier. I'm not gonna bore you and show you again. The angle I need lines up with this bit of MDF for that bottom corner. So if I lift that, that comes off there and there exactly the same time. And that is the desired angle I wanted. The difficult thing will be getting the other one exactly the same. Brilliant. Right, just need to mark the back of this. Then attach and hang it off a spare bit of MDF board I've got laying around, see how much they line up or not. Well, that's looking pretty good. Almost perfectly lined up. Obviously they're not gonna stay on the MDF. It's just there to something to try it on. They'll actually hang on a wall, but not on the MDF. Duh. Okay, that's sanded to 400 grit. Dust off there. Starting to see my little purple heart pupil in there. And get some sander sealer on the outside edge and then run over it with a fresh piece of 400 grit. Then 600, then 1000 and so on and so forth. And more and more I sand up the grades, the more you should be able to see my pupil and the gold. Purple Heart at the moment is very mottled brown because it's had no UV light on it for some time. That really will purple up in time, but let's just get some of that sander sealer in the grain on the outside edge. Give it a good chance to dry. See, now that's more purple. Let's have more light exposed while it was sat on the side while I was doing another project. I've only finished that to 320 on the outside edge by hand, having got any excess glue, etc., off from where I was pouring the resin. Lovely purple. Now the back, I'm leaving that D-hook exactly where it is because that is perfectly lined up and I've tightened that down, that's not changing. So I'm gonna to have to work the sander sealer around it. But watch this. <laughs> not that you're gonna see any of that because it's the back. It's just where I put that different color in to start and then you've got the gold behind it reflecting the light. And this, because it's gonna live on the wall, will be this color most of its life around the back here. Whereas the front and the edge will purple up. But look at that pop. Isn't that perfectly splendid? I think it's gonna be my new catchphrase. Perfectly splendid. Might even get a t-shirt with it printed on. I am joking about the t-shirt.
but it is perfectly splendid. Try and ignore the chair and the bit of MDF and picture that on the wall. About that sort of distance apart. I think they look perfectly splendid. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon.